it says we are live on Facebook. Let me double check to make sure because sometimes it lies to us, right? Got it. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, guys. Today I am live with Devon Brown and we are super stoked. This is one of the uh, interviews I've been hoping to get for many, many years and finally had the nerve to reach out and <laughs> say, what's up, Devon, right? Devon, thank you so much for being here. Oh, no, it's my pleasure, Kathy. Thank you so much for asking and inviting. Yeah, so everybody may know you from the Funnel Hacking Live in this community, mm -hmm. um, being the MC for that, but you have been doing this for a long time. Scott and I have been following you for years and years, and you were doing affiliate marketing, and then you started in the MC world, and you have just exploded. So tell people about you. Uh, yeah, sure. So um, I graduated college in 2000 and I started uh, my journey as an uh, online home business entrepreneur in about 2001-ish. Um, so I've been doing this uh, internet make money online world for 18 years. Now, uh, that's not to say that I've been doing it successfully because my I filed for bankruptcy two years in. Like I started in 01 and by 03 I had filed for bankruptcy because I was like horrible at making money online. Um, <laughs> And then I ended up uh, working for uh, this guy who was a successful online marketer. I ended up being his top sales guy. Uh, while working at that company, um, I was out in LA with him. And I had just been working for him for about three months. And to make a long story short, uh, he was supposed to go on stage for something. And uh, it was a Mark, Mark Victor Hansen, who was the co-author of uh, Chicken Soup for the Soul. Um, it was a Mark Victor Hansen event. And my boss was supposed to go on stage. He couldn't find him. They threw me on stage last minute. And that was my first time on stage in front of like 700 people, just cold. And uh, I, I did well. And then my boss found out that I was decent on stage. And so he said, Devon, MC all of our events. Sweet. So um, when, I, when I broke uh, away and, and, and started my own company in 09, um, I just focused on the, uh, the make the internet marketing stuff, the affiliate marketing stuff. That's what I started building systems for and teaching in 2009. Um, and then uh, in 2015, uh, Russell Brunson, who a lot of you know, um, who I have known since probably around 07, uh, hits me up and he says, Devon, do you still MC events? Because he was at an event I had MC back in like 06. And uh, yeah, 06, 07. And uh, anyway, long story short, that's, he says, I got 600 people come to Las Vegas for this event I've never done before called Funnel Hacking Live. Um, if you still MC events, would you still come and MC? And that, that was the first Funnel Hacking Live. And so it's just both have kind of taken off since then. Wow. Just from being shoved on stage with yeah. no prep and you weren't even expecting it. And it's like another leg of you exploded and you were just, I mean, because that's a lot of people, I think the newer people know you more for the MC stuff. Right. This, all the deep stuff that you've been doing and teaching uh, for many, many years. Correct. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people are surprised uh, when I, when I, when they see me on stage at, at, at an event, uh, they're surprised that I actually do the internet marketing stuff or the home business stuff. And, and, and they don't realize that, um, that I've been doing the home business stuff longer than I've been doing the MC stuff. Uh, so a lot of people will be like, Devon, why don't, why don't you get started with your own internet business? It's like, um, I actually have the, the number seven product on all of ClickBank right now in uh, in the in the uh, in the uh, make money online space. So so yeah, we were surprised because we have only been in ClickFunnels community for maybe not even a year yet. So seeing you on stage at Funnel Hacking Live, we were like, "What is he doing on stage? <laughs> Did he win an award?" And then we seen that you were the because um, you popped on in one of his and then popped off the stage and. And Scott's like, you need to rewind that. I think that was Devon Brown. And I'm like, why would he? I mean, did he win something? <laughs> and you were the MC, and we were we were so stoked because then he was like, that is pretty. That's really cool because we know you the other way. Right. The, yeah. So yeah, exactly. It's it's really cool. So Devon has done many things, like you said, and affiliate marketing is kind of where you got your push at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's, that's where I started. Um, I, I, so for somebody who makes his, his living online, I'm not very technical. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, I used to be a Taekwondo instructor. And my oh. favorite group to teach were the white belts, the brand new students who were just coming in because they were blank slates. And it was easy for me to start them off on the right foot. And so what I got good at 
from an internet marketing perspective was teaching him about and creating systems uh, that I wish somebody had created for me uh, back when I first started. So I would buy into a system and it was like easy push button system. And then, you know, step one would be download this HTML and FTP it somewhere. I'd be like, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Um, and so I got really good at creating systems that took all of that technical stuff out of it. Um, so even with the system that I have now, it's um, like all the funnels are already done, for example, for people. So it, it's for the advanced entrepreneur, it's, that's really not who I go after. People are like, oh, I want a flexibility to create my own stuff. I'm more targeted towards the newbie uh, who is like, I don't know anything about copywriting. And I'm like, okay, don't worry about it. The copywriting's already done. Just just push on and you're good, so. So how did, how did you choose out of all the marketing realms and what mm -hmm. you could do, how did you choose? Because uh, a lot of people are in that stage where they're stuck on, do I want to do affiliate marketing? Do I want to do e-com? You know, whatever. How did, how did you choose for yourself? So um, it's affiliate marketing is just kind of what I fell into because I started doing a lot of uh, network marketing, which is nothing but affiliate marketing with some levels attached to it. Uh, but what I would say is if you're stuck um, in the what should I do, I would suggest to you that there's no best. So often people are like, what's the best one to do? And the best one to do is the one that you want to do and the one that works best with you and your skill set, right? If you enjoy creating products, then create a product. If you don't want to create a product, then go affiliate marketing. If you love the idea of finding products for for $4 and reselling them for, for $12, then go e-commerce. The truth of the matter is that you can do six figures plus in any of these markets, just pick the, it's not which market you pick, it's how serious and dedicated you are to whichever market you pick, right? So I have friends of mine that make six figures selling ClickBank products. I have friends of mine that make six figures doing a plus doing their own launches on, you know, Warrior Plus or JVZoo. I have friends of mine who uh, make six figures doing e-commerce and selling little widgets and stuff. I have friends of mine who make six figures uploading Kindle books to Amazon. I don't care which one you do. Pick whichever one you like the best, but stick with it. That's the real secret. That, that really is. So I think too many people give up before, you know, the, you know, the calm before the storm or, you know, they drown, they feel like they're drowning and there's, I, they try to compare themselves far too often to the people that have done it. And, you know, I've done e -com for many, many years. I was not successful at it at first. I gave it up and then I just had that epiphany. I wanted to do it and I was going to make it work. And we've made well over six figures doing it as well. Um, but I think you're right. I think people give up way too quick or maybe maybe they're um, just they're so overwhelmed with what's out there. And so choosing, I think maybe choosing a mentor. Do you believe in? Oh, God, doing, yes. yes. Yeah, it's so so in, in, in school, uh, when you look at the person next to you and you look at their paper and you copy their answers, that's called cheating. But in real life and business, that's called a really smart thing to do. <laughs> Because, yeah. and that's the whole purpose of a, of a coach, of a mentor. So let's back up for a second and let's understand the reality of this entrepreneurial journey uh, for all of you as internet entrepreneurs. The first thing is um, uh, gurus sell the end result. They don't sell the work. And the reason gurus sell the end result is because that's what you want to buy. Mm -hmm. So they're giving you what you're selling. I want to by the end result. And so they're saying, hey, if you get into my program, here's the potential end result. The problem is that you can't buy a result. Mm -hmm. It doesn't quite work like that. There is still a process involved. And so a lot of times we buy into programs and we're like, I just want this end result. I paid my thousand dollars. Now give me this $10,000 a month business doesn't quite work like that. So you have to be honest with yourself. And you also have to understand that it's a process, not an event. And the process works like this. You get in, you suck at it, right? There's a right. learning curve. It's like learning a new language. You get a little, uh, 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 you take a step forward, you take two steps back. Like in my world, I teach people um, create an opt-in page, send it to, and uh, uh, create a whole bunch of follow-up messages, uh, and then link those follow-up messages to affiliate products. Well, the way it 
actually starts is you drive 100 people to an opt-in page. Oh, only 25 opted in. Okay, that's fine. Of those 25, 25 saw my affiliate product, none of them bought. That's where a lot of people quit. Well, no, they got to be followed up with. They got to be nurtured. So, so stop looking at it as um, if I don't get my result within the first three weeks, I'm going to drop out. Get committed to taking the daily action for at least six months to a year without any regard for the result that you get. And I hope that makes sense, right? So success is about small, con small actions taken consistently. Did you get traffic to your opt-in page today? Did you email your list today, right? And over time, those small actions add up. The problem is that those actions are both easy to do and they're easy to not do. And we do them once or twice and we look for these big wins. And if the big wins don't come, we give up and we say it didn't work when the reality is that they are working. They're just working like this, not like this. So I hope that makes sense. Right. So it's because a lot of people want that uh, immediate gratification. Correct. And I think that's the issue because with online marketing, there is no real immediate gratification when it comes to that. And so I think you nailed it just right because it's all in the follow-ups mm -hmm. and you know, everybody, there's questions going on right now is email marketing dead and are people going more towards the text messages on the phone and the chat bots and all that stuff. Um, so I think a lot of people, one, have a problem with the follow-up. What do they say? How do they do it? And then two, you know, they're on the fence, you know, because I'm a prime example that I don't open up my emails. I have a, almost 90,000 unopened in my <laughs> Gmail account, you know, and, but if somebody sends me a bot or, you know, they're annoying, but I look at them. Right. So what's your take on that? I mean, the, the, the thing on follow up, follow up being key. And then, um, is email marketing dying? So, um, no, email marketing is not dead. When, when, when you go and you sign up for a new service or a new website, you go and buy something online, the first thing they ask you for is your email. So that's just a fact. Um, here's what I'll say, uh, slightly broader, to, to answer the question in a slightly broader way. Everything works and everything doesn't work. Do bots work? Yes, I have six and seven figure friends who make money just with bots. Does email work? Well, considering the fact that I just sent an email out to my list the other day and I made like three grand in one day, you can't tell me email doesn't work. Right. That, that's, that's, that's just, uh, that's false because I just proved that it worked. Is it getting harder given the amount of noise out there? Yes, but that's always going to be the case. What marketers love to do is they like to find something new and they like to ruin it. We, I should say, like to ruin it. <laughs> Right. So when email marketing became a thing, marketers ruined it. Now that bots are a thing, marketers are quickly ruining it to the point that bots are going to be uh, less effective a year from now than they are now or two years from now than they are now, just because the marketplace will get larger and there will be more noise in the marketplace. The, right. the, what you're fighting for is you're fighting for attention and People are still buying online, but what's happening is that those who get really good at being consistent and consistently grabbing attention and who have large enough audiences are the people who end up getting the results. So it's not that it doesn't work. It's just that you have to be a little bit better today than you did in 2004 in order for it to work the same way. Does that make right. sense? That makes sense. Yeah, it, it really does. Um, so growing the audience, because I know that so list is everything for me. A list is, you know, key because you have that follow up. You have that, you know, the people in your group. You have that follow up. You have you have so many ways besides just the email these days to capture information. So for me, you know, I I'm a believer in the uh, email list. Um, but a lot of people are like, well, I don't have an email list. You know, I don't have anything. Do you um, recommend doing solo ads to some of the stuff to build the list, or how do you how do you go about telling your students to build a list? 
So that's going to depend on your niche. But what I tell my students personally is to use solo ads. So a lot of my students are in the make money online niche. Uh, a lot of my students are in really broad niches, like make money online, uh, weight loss, and personal development are the three niches that I teach people how to make money in as an affiliate marketer. Uh, because I chose those niches because they're like literally an endless number of products that you right. can affiliate products that you can sell in those niche markets. It's really easy for me to get somebody set up with one of those business businesses. And for those broad niche markets, I recommend solo ads over uh, uh, Facebook ads. And also with solo ads, there's no, there's no learning curve. Uh, there's no, uh, there are no limitations. Like Facebook will be like, you can't promote that. Solo ad provider does not care what you promote does not care how hypey your page is like make eight trillion dollars by tomorrow so i provider would be like okay i'll mail that i'm not telling you to do that i'm just um so uh but i used to be in the dating advice for women niche a while back um that was a really fun niche and the, i got my best traffic from youtube videos I got really good traffic and guest blogging as well, I would guest blog, I'd write these articles and I'd put them on popular dating sites and then just drive the traffic back to my site. And I would make these YouTube videos um, and then drive the traffic back to my site. Here's what I'll say with regard to traffic. If you're in a broad niche, like make money online or weight loss or um, personal development, something like that. Personally, I like solo ads. If you're in, in a smaller niche, um, whether you're affiliate marketing or doing your own business, if you're in a smaller niche, you wanna do uh, Facebook or, 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 or uh, or Google or YouTube or something like that, that's fine too. Here's the point. I don't care, and this is a theme that you'll see throughout this entire interview. I don't care what you do. I care that you do it consistently. That is the whole secret. Does YouTube work? Yes, if you do it consistently. Do solo ads work? Yes, if you do them consistently. Does Facebook work? Yes, if you do it consistently. Does Twitter work? Yes, if you do it consistently. Do Facebook groups work? Yes, if you do them consistently. I, that's like the real secret sorry that's a common theme right a hundred percent i mean without a doubt i know that um solo ads tend to scare people because they're they don't understand them i think is is what it is but also with the make money online niche you have an issue with facebook you know they've just changed a lot of their um regulations and stuff for your make money online niches right. and your get your weight loss stuff. So being in compliance with that is also a lot harder to get your ads approved. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I do kind of push people over to maybe solo ads or, or really reading the, in regards to what the rules and regulations are. Right. Um, but I've had so many people have issues with Facebook ads Um in the in the remarks of, of wording and they don't tell you what's wrong with them exactly so i i solo ads is something that i've only dabbled in um but do you have any tips on how to pick somebody with that yeah so uh i'll just go ahead and tell you uh there's a there's a gentleman named igor kapets k-h-e-i-f-e-t-s i'm probably spelling that wrong i-g-o-r k-h-e-i-f-e-t-s he sells quality solo ads uh, there's a place called Traffic For Me, T R A F F I C F O R M E dot com, and they have solo ads as well. If you just stick to those two, they're a little pricier than you would pay other places, but the reason they're pricier is because the traffic is actually real. What I don't want to see you do is get traffic. Uh, so the way a solo ad works is you just tell somebody how many visitors you want to your opt in page, and quick side note, you always send traffic to an opt-in page so that the people can get on your list. You always, always, always do that. Never say, oh, this is really awesome affiliate product. I'm gonna send traffic directly to the affiliate product because then if they don't buy, you never have the chance to follow up with them. And as we already said, the fortune is in the follow-up and the money is in the list. So um, you can go find solo ads and you can just do a search for solo ads and you'll find solo ad vendors that will sell you a visitor for five, 10, 15, 20, 30 cents, right? For one visitor, which is cheap. It's nine times out of 10, it's crap. Don't buy it. But Devon, this person over here is charging me 89 cents a click or 90 cents a click or a dollar 20 a click. Yes, I understand. That's because it's a real person actually clicking. And it's not just a bunch of spam traffic from Uzbekistan 
not that there's anything wrong with Uzbekistan, I'm just saying, right? Of people who don't even speak English. That's not what you, Devon, I can buy 50,000 clicks for $14. No, you can't. <laughs> That's not how it works. Just if, trust me, I've tried. If that was a thing, I would be telling you it's a thing. It goes yeah. back to mentorship and cheating off somebody's paper who already has the answer. I just gave you the answer. Igor K fits in traffic for me. Now, do you listen to that and go buy your solo ads there? Which, by the way, I don't get anything for sharing that with you. I don't get them. That's not my, those aren't my affiliate links. Right. Or do you just say, I think I can do it better? Right. Yeah. And I think that's what a lot of people do is try to recreate the wheel when it comes to this. I, the, I always try to tell everybody there's no A to Z straightforward answer whenever it comes to online marketing. There's right. just not. I mean, we can give you what's worked for us. Mm hmm and you know continue that way but um i think uh, people are wanting that for sure i if i sit down and do this am i getting this right so uh, and that seems to be a lot of the mental block that i'm running into with a lot of people so how do you address those people uh just real talk yeah, that's yeah. What, you're, what you're doing right now what you're doing right now so a okay it doesn't work like that if i if i order a click if i and i get it all the time still too if i order 100 visitors how many uh sales will i make hell if i know maybe <laughs> none maybe five maybe somewhere in the middle let me ask you a question have you ever gone to an opt-in page before you can go ahead and answer that for me gabby yes yes when you were visiting the opt-in page, were you guaranteed that it was it guaranteed that you would opt in? No. Have you ever gone to an opt-in page and not opted in? Yes. Have you ever gone to an opt-in page, thought that it was kind of interesting and decided that you were gonna put in a fake email address? Yes. Have you ever gone to an opt-in page, opted in, gotten the first email engine chosen to opt out? Yes. Okay, great. So if you've done all those things, what would make you think that other people aren't doing the exact same stuff that you're doing? Exactly. We're dealing with human beings and nobody can guarantee the actions that a human being is going to take. And anybody who promises you, if you buy a hundred visitors, you're going to make eight sales. They're lying to you. That's <laughs> not how humans work, which is yeah. why I can't say just buy, I can literally send a hundred visitors to, to a website, right? from a solo ad vendor and send a hundred visitors, a hundred different visitors on the same day to the, uh, to the exact copy of that website and get two different opt-in rates because right. I'm dealing with human beings. In this batch up here, I might've lucked out and found two people that were just really hot and ready to buy whatever I was selling at that exact time. And I may get a hundred visitors and make two sales. This one down here, Nobody was just happy. Nobody just wanted to buy and I might make zero sales. Yeah, there's no guarantee. Right. Which I think makes the online market fun for me because it's always a challenge and you always are trying to figure something out. Exactly. But for and me, that, it's fun, but you know, I like to make money too. <laughs> well, and that's, and that's, that's, the, that's the broader, if you want a guarantee, don't be an entrepreneur. Right. That's not how entrepreneur is. That's not how this works. Like, Go get a nine to five. And I think that's why they're trying to transition out of that right. mindset of the nine to five. I go to work. And even if I don't work, I still get paid kind of thing. And exactly. but whenever you're your own boss and you have to, you know, make things happen, you know, you, you can make things happen and it's still not work. And, and that's the thing. That's why we loved following you is because when you do your videos, it's a no non shit, no bullshit. You're, kind of just like boom boom I don't care if you like what I hear or, or say or not it's but it's real thank you I, I'll tell you that the most valuable um asset that you have as an entrepreneur especially if you're, if you're trying to build a brand for yourself and build a name for yourself is authenticity if you want if you want the the, the secret to being a successful brand online and making sales and having people follow you and like you uh, it's just being authentically you. And, and that is whatever that is. If you cuss a lot, then cuss. And you're going to turn off so many people. And that's okay. If right. you want to do every video in a suit and tie, 
then do that if that is authentically you. If you, I do every single one of my videos in a white t-shirt. I normally have my hat on backwards. I took it off to look nice for you guys today <laughs> in this. But I, you will not find, unless it's like a, a professional video of an ad of like me on stage emceeing or something, you will not find a content video of mine that is not me in a white t-shirt. They're all in a white t-shirt. People are like, people will see me at seminars and be like, you have other clothes? I'm like, I know, it's crazy, right? <laughs> but it's authentically me. Devon, right. I, don't, I don't like your white t-shirt. Okay, I'm not your cup of tea. That's okay. Yeah, you, and that's right. Now that I'm thinking about it, you do do them all in the white. I don't even really think about it because that's not what I'm there for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, that, and I think that's that just spoke true to it doesn't matter because I'm there to listen to what you have to say. But yes, you usually are sitting at your computer with your hat on backwards and in t-shirt and jeans. That's it. Sure. Yeah. So yeah, yeah that, that's great. And, and I try to express that too. Um, I was very worried because sometimes I cuss and I like to drink beer. So we decided we're going to do a barbecue brew and a, and we do that live and I'm barbecuing, drinking a beer and people talk to me. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed things started skyrocketing. Why? Because I was authentic to who yes. I was. Exactly. So you see, and I think that's exactly why you're so magnetic and people, once they start seeing you on YouTube or at events that you MC, that they're instantly trying to find you. you. But Devon does so much with affiliate work that a lot of you guys have to listen to because he's got a new program that he's come out. So if you're trying to get into affiliate marketing, this guy's it. So tell us a little bit more about what you've got going. Sure. Yeah. Um, the name of my program is 12 Minute Affiliate. One, two minute affiliate. Uh, I got dot com and dot net, whichever one you want to go to. Uh, 12 Minute Affiliate dot com. And basically what it is, is um, I said, OK, if you're going to if you're a newbie, it's very newbie targeted. If you're a newbie. Right. And you want to make money as an affiliate marketer. The easiest way, in my opinion, to do that is to go traffic to opt in page to what we call a bridge page to an affiliate product on somewhere like ClickBank. And it's easiest to do that in one of the big niches like make money online or personal development or, or weight loss. And so what 12 minute affiliate is, is I've already created all the funnels, nothing for you to create. I've already created all of the follow up messages for each niche, nothing for you to write. I've already chosen all the products. Now, if you want to swap those products out or insert your own affiliate products, high five, do that. But if you don't want to, the products are already in the system. So you literally log into the system and all you do is create, is uh, go get your Aweber, stick your Aweber into the system. But Devon, where do I get the follow-up messages? I've already written them all. There's nothing for you to write. Just transfer them over, okay? Nice. Or you can just get my staff to set everything up for you. But Devon, uh, 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 the products, they're already in the system. But Devon, how do I get traffic? Once your system is set up, you click on a little button that says get traffic, and then you determine how much traffic you want based off of your budget, and you say send me 200 visitors, and you buy it, and then I send the traffic to your opt-in page. People get on your list, they see a product, and they're followed up with for like five months or some nonsense like that, and I sell them different affiliate products with your affiliate link, and you keep all the commissions that ClickBank or JVZoo or whoever sends you. That's it. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is crazy because you, you've yes. done all of it. You don't, it's basically a plug and play. Yes, it's very, play. like we've had people set it up. The fastest I've ever had somebody set it up is, uh, well, if you want us to do the setup for you, you can get the whole thing up and running in like 12 minutes. And that's us doing the setup. If you want to do it yourself, you can get the whole thing up and running in about 90 minutes. Um, and then uh, the fastest I've ever seen somebody uh, get traffic to their list is uh, 48 hours because they ordered traffic right when we were about to do start a, start a batch. And within 24, 48 hours, they started seeing people on their list. And the fastest, uh, and just, just, I'm not guaranteeing this will happen, but I've actually seen it where somebody jumped in on a Monday at 5 p.m., um, ordered traffic, set up their system, ordered traffic before they went to bed. We processed the order on Tuesday. Traffic started getting delivered on Wednesday and one person of the traffic just started, was really hot and ended up buying a product on Wednesday. So in less than 36 hours, somebody's made their first sale. Not guaranteeing that, I'm just saying. Just that happened. Right. <laughs> nice, so you, you've taken out all that guesswork for 
um, the follow-up emails, which I think a lot of people struggle with. Correct. That's what I struggled with. How long, if they did do their own, how long do you suggest um, keeping these people in, in their system and following up with just the, the products and, and whatever? I so, mean, could, go ahead. Yeah, well, it, it's not really a question of length. It's a question of consistency, right? So it's like forever is the short answer. Um, right. I put five months worth of follow-up messages into the system because I understand that the majority of people are not going to email their list on a daily or, or multiple times a week basis. Uh -huh. Right. So I already know the bad habits that you're that, that, that you're likely to fall into. I already know. Oops, sorry. I already know that in all likelihood, you're not going to email your list. If you're not if you haven't if you're not in that habit yet of emailing your list, you're never going to email. You're not going to email your list. So right. because I know that what I've done is I've said, well, let me go ahead and take care of that for them. And I'll put five months worth of follow up messages in there for you. But on my personal uh, on my personal um uh, uh, opt-in pages and follow-up messages, I usually only have like five or six follow-up messages because I know that once you're on my list, you're going to get a broadcast message from me multiple times a week anyway. Do you purge your list? Uh, yes, um, I will purge. I will clean my list, um, but I, I'll do that. Number one, if my list is under 10,000, I really don't purge it. That, that I, once, I, I would wait until you have a few thousand people on your list before, you, before you, you get into purging or cleaning it. But I would say I clean my list probably once every three months, three or four months or something like that. I'll remove all of the people who have been on my list for a significant amount of time and not uh, ever opened an email. Because if you've been on my list for three months and you've never opened one email, you're probably not going to open anything. And that's okay. That doesn't hurt my feelings we'll just see you later right um, yeah that's that was the question question next question is how long do you give them before you start yeah not with the non no opens i just do it about once every three months just because i just something i've, I've chosen if, i know there are people who do it uh more often than i know there are people who do it le less often but like anything just as long as you're consistent with it and cleaning it up every so often that helps your deliverability rate yeah, uh, yeah, and I, I agree. And and also, you know, whenever you're dealing with AWeber and, and Active Campaign, all of them, mm -hmm. you know, you get charged per exactly. uh, so many, and then they start charging you more and more and more. So um, yeah, that was that was a question that I had come in on my private chat down here. <laughs> so you send people the traffic to their opt-in and mm -hmm. then to a bridge page mm -hmm. and then to the affiliate um offer that away most people i've seen uh, do just an opt-in and then send them straight over to the affiliate um Product. you know yes. so so what's your your thoughts on that so that's fine too the reason i personally do it with bridge pages is because of the system that i've set up and so this is the this is like kind of the, the i've been doing this for a really long time so i'm adding steps um if i've got and this actually just happened uh, the other day. Let's say I got people, uh, let's say I got 10, 10, 10 people who are all driving traffic to an opt-in page, right? And then I've got, I, I set up 10, my staff and I set up 10 different autoresponders. And the first four messages of those autoresponders are all going to a certain affiliate product, right? Right. That means that if that affiliate product gets taken off of ClickBank, that means that my staff and I, or the person who owns the list, the client has to go into every single autoresponder message and swap out links. Make sense? Right. So if I've got, um, right, if I've got, I don't know, I'm making up numbers. If I've got uh, 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 20 follow-up messages and the first five messages go to this affiliate product, then if this affiliate product goes away, I've got one, two, three, four, five places I've got to go in and swap the link. However, if these five messages are going to this one bridge page and this one bridge page pre-sells this affiliate product, then if this affiliate product goes away, then I just switch the link one place and the emails are just still going to the bridge page and they're still linking to a brand new affiliate product. Nice. Does okay. that make sense? Yeah, that, that actually is more beneficial for someone. So right. save you time in the long run if you're going to use other products such as ClickBank and... Uh, JVZoo. Right. So if you wanted, right. If you wanted to swap that out for a JVZoo product as opposed to a ClickBank product, you don't have to go into each email. And so what I've got is I've got people who have got follow-up messages 
where we've got like uh, somewhere between 80 and 100 follow-up messages going out for people. And sometimes the follow-up messages, if there's a popular product, we'll promote like, all right, the first four messages go to this product. And the uh, messages 20 through 24 go to the same product. And messages 40 through 44 go to the same product. And messages 80 through 84 go to the same product. Well, that's 16 places. I would have to figure out where to swap out the affiliate link. Right. Whereas I can just go into one bridge page, swap out the link and I'm done. And the, the copy is written in such a way that it's generic to whatever the niche is. So if it's in the weight loss niche, it's not saying the copy isn't, this product will detox the, the, the product is, or the, the email or the copy on the page isn't, this product, insert product name here is really awesome. Right. The copy is, want to lose weight? Click here. I'm, I'm oversimplifying, but right. it's generic. So I can stick any product on the back end of that. Yeah, so it doesn't matter exactly, you know, as long as it's in the realm of what you're doing. So, because you definitely will not use a weight loss product or email for uh, make money online. Bingo. Yeah. So let's see if we have any questions. So this is great for someone that doesn't have a list yet. Your 12 minutes. Oh, absolutely. Because it walks you through step by step exactly what to do. I even, fun fact, I even give away a free vacation just for you getting the system set up. Nice. So, right. Because I, I, I've learned that I need to incentivize people, not for the result, but for the action. I incentivize you not for losing weight, but for just going to the gym, figuratively speaking. Right. 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 Just get the system set up and order some traffic. But what if nothing happens? If nothing happens, you still get a free vacation. Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday. That's right. And then Shadell asked, how many products on your uh, system that you have, the 12-minute system? Um, how say? many affiliate products? Uh, I think each niche has about five or six affiliate products, but they're flexible enough. It's flexible. There's also another part of the system where you can just create custom affiliate funnels and link them to whatever product you want um, as well. But I mean, that's another conversation for another day. But um but I, I think we've built in like five or six products for each niche. But if you want to go in and swap out products, it's so easy. You just go to the, the bridge page and say, I don't want to sell this affiliate product. Just I want to sell this one and say, here's my affiliate link. And then, then you're done. So it's built in with five. And then, uh, but the number of products you can promote affiliate products is literally unlimited. So nice. the next question, are you using AB for your vacation incentives? And are you using ClickFunnels? Um, Yes, I do uh, use AB for my vacation incentives. And B, I do use ClickFunnels, but not for, um, I use ClickFunnels for, uh, not for, it's not how I build my assist. Like when somebody jumps into 12 minute affiliate, they're not getting ClickFunnels. I'm not telling them how to copy stuff with ClickFunnels or anything like that. All of my stuff in 12 minute affiliate is, um, is custom programmed so that there's nothing that they have to do as far as creating anything of, uh, for themselves. So you don't have to go get a ClickFunnels account. You need to get an AWeber account, but you don't need to go get a ClickFunnels account or anything. But I do use ClickFunnels uh, for other stuff that I do, so. All right, and then let's see here. Everybody's loving our conversation, by the way. Oh, great, awesome sauce. <laughs> um, let's see, we have... Nope, I don't have any other questions. So, I, go ahead. I was just going to say, I'll tell you guys a quick story real quick. Um, back to what we were saying about authenticity. So if yes. you get nothing else from our conversation, two things. Number one, consistency. Number two, authenticity. Uh, uh, and I'll get back to authenticity in a second. Number three, what I will tell you is just follow one path. Um, you can't tie both shoes at the same time. Don't try to follow everybody. Just the whole shiny object syndrome understand that every every single thing you jump into is going to be the same. There's always going to be a learning curve. It's always going to sound very sexy. <laughs> Everything is going to be sold to you as the easiest or the best. Doesn't matter which one you jump into. Jump into whichever one you like the best and under, uh, you like the best. Understand though it's going to be a process. But, but let me say this real quick. Um, when I started emceeing events uh, back in the day, uh, the first time I was on stage emceeing event was like probably late 05, early 06. Um, Somewhere around 2007, uh, I was on stage at, at this event and um, for, for the boss, my boss I was working for at the time and I was in seeing events for free. And uh, somebody runs up to me before I go on stage and they're like, Devon, the speaker is not ready or the speaker's not here. They just called in, they're 15 minutes out. You got to kill 15 minutes on stage. And I'm like, holy crap, what am I going to do for 15 minutes? That's ridiculous. I'm just going to ad lib for 15 minutes. And comedy. <laughs> say again. I said stand up comedy. Yeah, stand up comedy. Like I don't have a routine. I don't know. And so I, I get on stage 
And I decided to teach the crowd a hip hop routine. Now I used to be a hip hop dancer. I used to go to <laughs> nightclubs like five nights a week. We used to like battle other crews and stuff like that. Like I'm pretty good on the dance floor. <laughs> and so I, I get on stage and I was like, and I teach the crowd this hip hop routine and they loved it. Yes. And I say that to say this. Oh, and, and once people saw people coming up to me, I thought, like, Devon, I'm going to show that routine to my kid. Oh my God, I can't believe you do it. You did that. Oh, can you come do that at my event? And I'm like, excuse me? Here's the thing. Nowhere in the MC handbook does it say, teach hip hop if you need to kill time. <laughs> it doesn't say, that's not a thing. But for me, it was authentically a thing. It was something that I legitimately brought to the table. And because of that authenticity, they loved it. Nowhere in the Successful Internet Marketer's Handbook does it say, in all of your t-shirts, wear a white t-shirt, or when, in all of your videos, excuse me, wear a white t-shirt with your hat on backwards. It doesn't say that in the book. Right. But that's authentically me, which is why it works. If you wear a white t-shirt with your hat on backwards in every video, and it doesn't work, it's because it's not authentically you. <laughs> but that's what Devon did, yeah, because I'm Devon. Right. Yeah, it'd look weird if I wore a hat backwards right now. Exactly. Need to go grab one, but. <laughs> but I hope that makes sense, and I, I really want to want to want to want to encourage you to to be true to who you are and understand that that is the secret sauce for everything. But Devon, people might not like me, and people might also love you. Right. So they want to see some of that dance. Um, I can't. I can't really. It's it's. <laughs> It, it, I'll tell you what it is though. It's uh, this thing called tutting, like King Tut. Uh -huh. And so I would teach this routine. It's just a little hand routine where people would like tut like this. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. And I teach that from stage. And then I would call people up on stage to do it on stage and I break them out of their comfort zone. It's this whole thing. You know, and that's, that's what we do best. I, that's what, that's what I love to do. I love to um, put people on the spot and, you know, have fun. That's all you have to do. Whenever you're doing what you're doing and you love what you're doing, you're just, the real you is going to pop out anyways. So that's why I'm like, all right, guys, I drink beer and I cuss a little bit. So if you don't like me, sign ah, up. <laughs> exactly. But that, but that drink beer and cuss a little bit. There are a lot of people who are out there thinking right now, man, I drink beer and I cuss a little bit. I don't think I can, I can. When you are authentically you, that gives other people permission to be authentically them and they thank you for that. Right. They Make appreciate that. I can't tell you the number of people who I've had say to me, Devon, watching you do X gave me permission to do my version of X. And I'm like, you did? I was just killing time. And they're like, yeah. By you authentically being you, that gave me permission to be authentically me, and now my business has skyrocketed, or something like that. It's, it's yeah, it's one of the we greatest compliments. We want to know how many people went out and tried to break dance in the lobby afterwards. <laughs> yeah, so they usually don't do it in the lobby. Uh, they, they 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 usually don't do it in the lobby. Um, they'll do it on stage with me, or they'll show it to me, but they don't. It doesn't turn into dance contests in the lobby afterwards. I don't think it ever happened. Um, well, we'll have to make that a thing the next time I see you then. <laughs> exactly. Dance contest in the lobby. So your 12-minute affiliate program, do you allow affiliates to market that for you as well? I do. Yeah. If you if you are if you are an affiliate marketer and if you have a list of people interested in making money online, making money from home, if you have a, a list in the or a traffic in the make money online niche, uh, you can go to ClickBank. And inside of ClickBank, you can go into their affiliate marketplace. It's on ClickBank. And inside of their affiliate marketplace, uh, the category is e-business, e-marketing. That's the uh, category inside of ClickBank. That's the make money online category in ClickBank. And if you scroll down, it's number seven on the whole category called the 12-minute affiliate system. So you don't need anything from me. If you have a ClickBank account, and it, number one, it takes two seconds to create a ClickBank account. It's free to do. But if you have a ClickBank account, you can go promote 12-minute affiliate right now. And I've got multiple swipes and, and links and everything good to go. Nice. So where can people find you? So where are they? Where, what's up next for Devon Brown and where can people find you? So uh, you can find me at DevonBrown.com. That's D-E-V-O-N-B-R-O-W-N.com. And next for me is um, really my, my favorite quote, and I'm going to get this a little bit wrong. It's not my favorite quote. Uh, I'm going to get my favorite quote wrong. Is by a guy named Heath Buckmaster. And it says, get this right. Often, it's not about becoming a new person, but instead about becoming who you already are and have always been and were and have and you've wait and were always meant to be, but
but just don't know how to be. So often it's not about becoming a new person, but instead becoming who you already are and have always been and were always meant to be, um, but just don't know how to be. And so over the past couple of years, when people seeing me on stage, I've gotten a lot of, Devon, why are you not doing this more? Why are you not on TV? Why are you not on bigger stages? And that's something that's always been in my heart for a long time. And so I'm just now living into that. And so what's next for me is uh, actually just got out of a meeting yesterday and I have another meeting later this week. We're going to start uh, putting together a collaboration of all my stuff on stage. And we're going to start marketing uh, myself to be on bigger stages around the world um, as, an, as a host and as an MC. Um, and then the goal is, to, I don't know, maybe I'll one day I'll host America's Got Talent or something like that. Be on stage in front of millions. That would be that would be fun. That would be fun. Are you give Terry Crews a run for his money? I would absolutely give Terry Crews a run for his money as an MC at that, him and Tyra Banks. Nick Cannon is pretty good. I'd be, that'd be a good fight. I'll totally give Terry Crews and Tyra Banks a run for their money. Yeah, you know, I, I'm a big Terry Crews fan. As um, am I. No, like as a movie, as an actor, I, I love Terry Crews. I think he's amazing. As an MC, I'm totally taking it to him. But as, a, as an actor, I can't touch him. As an MC, have to work on the pet pop though yeah i can't i do i do okay on the pet pop i, pop, I can't there you go, there you go. <laughs> all right so devon before we sign off i gotta do something really quick i'm gonna this guy's been sitting in the background watching and he is like hey, one of your biggest how are you <laughs> so i just wanted to bring him on and and uh so he can see you and, and he's one of the reasons you're here because of uh, all this. It, you've been great. We, we love you. We, we watch you all the time. And we, I know you're going to follow and you get a whole bunch more followers from this because you just have that, that way about you that draws people in and, and we're thankful for you. So remember guys, it's Devon, not Devin. That's right. <laughs> I think your website even says that, doesn't it? It does, DevonBrown.com. It actually says right at the beginning, it's Devon, not Devin. <laughs> and you can find him at DevonBrown.com, mm -hmm. uh, D-E-V-O-N, Brown.com, and uh, 12 Minute Affiliates, and you can, you can promote it, or you can go in and get it for yourself and get started. It's a done-for-you system, basically, just a plug-and-play, and you're up and running. So that's really great. I, I love it. Devon, you have been amazing. You have been fun. And I appreciate you very much. Oh, no, Kathy. Thank you so much. And everybody out there in uh, Kathy's world, thank you guys so much for having me. I hope it's, I've added at least a little bit of value uh, to your day. Um, and if there's any way I can be of service, please let me know again. Kathy, thank you so much for reaching out. I am honored and humbled um, that you would reach out and invite me. Thank you. We may have a dance off, but you may win. We can do some karaoke. I may win on that. All right, deal. <laughs> See you later. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.